Cycle Hum, the guitar podcast. Today I'm showing you my little project guitar here. It's a Dean, a Dean Custom Zone. At least I think that's the model. Um, I bought this in a pack of guitars and amps for $10. It was two amps and two guitars. Both guitars were Deans. Uh, one wasn't working. This one was working, but it was completely stock. It was completely black and had humbuckers and a switch and an extra knob in there that I just don't have anymore. In the guitar um, so yeah ten dollars for all of it one of the amps wasn't working the other guitar is kind of you know it's ready for scrap like the neck is is got a huge crack going down the middle of it I'll talk about that some other time but this guy I was looking at this and it was all black which I'm not a fan of I like guitars to pop um, but I was seeing little hints of neon pink paint coming out underneath the edges like in the switch cavity around you know the back plate and stuff like that this little bits of pink I was like I think this is one of those neon pink Dean custom zones and I think they uh, they had trouble selling them so they took the body and they completely refinished it in this you know shiny black and so I was excited about that originally I was thinking oh, I'm just gonna clean these guitars up and I'll flip them but I was looking at this like, I want to mess with this guitar. I want to have fun with it. So I attacked it with a uh, with an orbital sander one day, a random orbital sander. And I got most of the pink paint liberated. And I left it kind of rough, kind of blotchy, like this you know rat rod, unfinished car kind of look. And I just hit a point with the sander. I was like, you know what? I think I like the way it looks. I think I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'm not even going to clear coat it or anything like that. So this is just flat sanded it's got like a neat matte finish that makes the neon just kind of pop in a different way i really like uh, i took all the electronics out and i went down to one volume pot which is my style i like that i almost never use tone pots so why even bother and then i mounted this really neat old tisco pickup in it that i had laying around and uh, this thing is microphonic and it's not the most microphonic pickup i've ever played with but uh yeah it it definitely is microphonic. Let me uh, show you an example of what it does. I dropped my pick a second ago. Here it is. So let's put on there's the uh, there's the dry sound. Let's put on a crazy fuzz and you're going to hear the microphonic nature of this thing. You can hear the pickup either rattling with the playing, it's either the resonance of the guitar or it might be the resonance of the springs behind it, but there's this little splash behind everything you play when you're playing really high gain stuff. Uh, I haven't used this guitar live yet. I don't know if it's possible, if it could handle a lot of volume and a lot of gain behind it. I mean, I don't use a ton of gain for my surf rock band. I use a lot of gain for you know my church playing, but then I'm using in ears and it's a pretty quiet stage. So I might be able to use this for church. Is this guitar churchable? Yes or no? Tell me uh, in the comments, or maybe I'll make a little thing up here, um, a little poll. Do you think this would be too distracting for church? I don't know. I play crazy guitars at church, so it's possible that I could church this thing. Um, I think I'm going to use this as kind of a pickup tester. I don't know if I'll use the Tisco pickup in there forever. I really like its sound. It's got this nasty Link Ray, you know, lo-fi garage rock sort of thing going on that I really like. But it's so easy to swap pickups in and out of this body that I might make this my pickup tester. It plays great. I mean, these guitars, at least the uh, the custom zones from Dean when they're in their stock, they can't sell these things for 200 bucks. You see them all over eBay for like 175. So it's not like there's any resale value on this thing, really. Um, but 
still it plays great for a sub two hundred dollar guitar. The neck is nice and flat and really fast in the way you know it's made to be like a, a budget shredder, and it does that. Like you can play really fast on it. Uh, it doesn't buzz out anywhere on the fretboard. I don't have the action as low as it could be up on the higher frets, but it's still plenty low enough to get really fast with. The neck feels great. The fretwork is great. I'm really impressed with this freaking $5 Dean that I bought. And it looks crazy cool. I'll probably, uh, if I keep this guitar, guitar around a long time, I'll probably, you know, draw things on there and put stickers on there. Who knows? I, you know, fix it up and make it my own, even more than I already have. Uh, the, the bridge is not fantastic. It's not the best example of, you know, a, a strat style trim. I had to put my own bar in there. The bar that it came with was either like the wrong size or it was stripped or something like that. This one rocks around there in a little bit. I could fix it with some plumber's tape, but for the most part, I can work with that. I'm not going to spend any money on this putting a fancy bridge on it. Um, five springs back there. I'm usually a three spring guy, but I think the, uh, the cavity here is a little shorter than normal. So I had to put two extra springs in there to get the bridge locked down to the body the way I like. The tuners are fine. This has a uh, decent tuning stability when I really lay into that trim. I mean, I, I think this is a great guitar, especially for, you know, brand new sub $200. You can pick them up, uh, used as cheap as $5. <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever going to find a deal like that, uh, on the reg, but I'm pretty stoked that I got this thing for five bucks. It, it was a really fun project for five bucks. I got to say, you know, I've been doing a lot of demo work for the past, you know, two years now. And so I've just been focusing on guitars that are sent to me and guitars that, uh, that feature things that I'm trying to demonstrate. And I haven't done any big guitar mods for myself or like little builds for myself in a long time. And it felt really like personally therapeutic to take this thing all the way apart, attack it with a sander, like not care how it turns out or what happens to it, you know, uh, drag it around on the ground if I want to. I, I had to uh, sand out the the uh, the little holes here on the side to get the Tisco to fit. Like no big deal. I don't care. Like I'm not losing any money on this guitar. Uh, there was just something really fun about getting back into that experience because I used to do that all the time, and I've just been busy with other things lately. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll close this out with some more playing. Uh, hope you enjoy it.